enriching themselves at the expense of common wananchi. But the essence is, how do we ensure that the common wananchi realizes their power, the power that they have? You see, I'm a believer of Article 1 of the Constitution. I don't believe... Back then is when the president was Alpha and Omega. But with the Constitution, all sovereign power belongs to the people. And when the people feel that their leaders are not representing them, then they have nothing but to take back that power. So the question of how we need to be able to ensure the momentum doesn't die, the various strategies, we need to go back to the drawing board and reevaluate what is working and what is not working. Because I kind of still do not understand. I feel like the president is not honest with Kenyans because on the other hand, you're talking about that you are ready and willing to be able to listen, but there is continuous abduction, killing, arresting of, of people. We are seeing infiltration, and we know very well the people who are infiltrating all these uh, peaceful protests are uh, people who have been being hired by politicians and even uh, government uh, players. The right to, to protest is protected um, in the constitution. And there is no crime in coming out and engaging in a very peaceful protest. So rather than prolonging uh, the problem, we need to just be able to have, be intentional of where we want to take this country. So the people must continue in their own spaces, within their communities. The first is, how do we ensure the masses are educated and they know their right? Secondly, how do we ensure, because at the end of the day, we must never shy away from the political discussion. I see so many people saying, oh, Mr. Kimambo, yes, yes, and all that. But politics affects our day-to-day -day life. The struggle we are in today, these are political problems that require political solution. So how can the masses organize, first claim back their power, understand the role and the responsibilities of their leaders, understand how they can be able to play the active role of holding the leaders accountable. You see, majority of Kenyans today tend to, to, to behave as if our role at vo as voters ended at the ballot box. No, once you elected a leader, this is like a servant. There are servants, there are people you have elected, you pay them with your taxes. So one, you need to be able to ensure that this person is held accountable and is working for you. So how do we continuously, the essence could be, how do we ensure? First, do we know their responsibility? Then secondly, where is their offices? How frequently do they organize public participation or meetings and forums to discuss issues affecting the community, present the same in county assembly, and come back and give feedback. That is not what we are seeing. So those are areas and avenues that we must be able to utilize as citizens, as Kenyans, because devolution, the essence of devolution was to be able to trickle uh, services to the community and ensure that uh, the public are so much involved. So let us go back to the community, uh, continue with all the conversation at the level, utilize all the avenues, be it the space, because for it, the space today, uh, nobody is going to tear gas me or threaten me when I'm now in the space, because even just the other day, I was denied an opportunity to be able to have a community study cell by the, by the OCS, saying that there are orders from above that are... Um, uh banning uh, community gatherings and activity and i'm like which which law are we using actually so you see so in this oppressive system that want to curtail our freedom of association want to curtail our right to protest then there are various avenues that we can still be able to use in those chamas in those matatus uh, we can still be able to go organize those mama chamas talk about them just be able to organize them and enable them to be active citizens. What we need is people to be able to write and be active citizens in this country and fully be involved in day-to-day uh, -day, uh, uh, discussion of the politics and knowing how their resources are being utilized. Okay, thank you so much, Habiba, for the particular shot for encouraging us that our role as citizen does not just end after the ballot is casted, but it continues uh, through oversight, through public participation, through educating the masses on the importance of being involved in our political systems. Uh, over to you, Julia, award for your question. 
Hello, thank you so much. Um, mine really is also, I, I love the conversation in terms of reviewing uh, how the protests have evolved over time. Because back in uh, 2019, I think we also tried to also address the issue of unemployment at that time. And I remember we planned and organized a whole demonstration. We had this whole telegram group and all these people talking about how they don't have jobs. But now when it came to going to the ground, we only had like 60 people or so on, or so on the ground. Um, but looking now where we are mm -hmm. and looking at um, even now the Santa Saba protests, which was, a, you know, it was a significant turning point in, in the country. And also now the Gen Z uh, protests, there's a lot that have come out uh, of this whole thing. And oh, I'm proud God. to see where we've come from. And I was there. Oh, <laughs> I decided I will go to the street just to celebrate that. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, there's a lot um, that went wrong as well. The people who lost their businesses, and it wasn't our fault. What I can say, having, uh, having had gone to the street on, on Tuesday, the first Tuesday, there were a lot of people, and there were businesses still running. Java was still open. They were giving us water. Uh, restaurants, people were walking around with water, you know, helping protesters. The medics who came through. Um, it was really beautiful to see. And unfortunately, yes, things went here as usual. But I believe this is not the end of it. What I can say, what we've achieved is major because we kept these people on their toes. Now they'll be coming to our homes and they have to think of what they're going to say. They have to make sure they're going to do their work. And I think that's what now we need to do. When we are re-strategizing now, do we go to our home areas? As uh, the previous speaker has said, let's know what these people are supposed to uh, offer when they're in power and, and um, speak out. I was laughing the other day because uh, I, I, I use matatu, uh, these matatus and if you know, there's this Sambaza thing that we usually are given to sit on. And I remember one one conductor has always known that I don't sit on Sambaza. So on this day, he made a comment and he said, ah, na kunawafa kuna maringo ya kukekalia Sambaza na hauna gari yako. And I had to speak up because I, I'm using my money. The same way with the government. These are our, our money. But we are so used to bare minimum and we allow this bare minimum to be given to us, yet there is more that can be done for us. So we need to be speaking out. We need to showcase if there is a road in your area that's, that's been there and there's been no development, show it. If there is a school that looks, you know, uh, uh, that has been in, in terms of classes not uh, being uh, of good standard, let's show it. And showcase even where these leaders are living, these are really these uh, facilities, our healthcare system. Um, I had a colleague uh, a few weeks ago who lost the dad because NHIF, uh, in, in every hospital he would go, they would be refused in because of NHIF and whatever is happening right now in the healthcare system. And by the time he was accepted in one hospital, again, they were told, they've been paying for years, but they were told it's not updated on the system. So they had to pay a bit of money as the updating was being done, which is so unfair. And so many people are suffering out there, but it is not fair. We wake up every day to come work uh, and there are taxes, and now they want to add more taxes, and yet we're not getting value for our money. So kudos to all the Gen Zs, kudos to the far we've come, and let's think and uh, on how we can keep these people, you know, doing the job, their job rights. Thank you.